Let's return now to news that broke earlier this hour. Wildlife experts examining images of a dead whale carcass that washed up on Victoria's far east coast. They say it's not the famous albino humpback Migaloo. Well, let's now check in yet again with wildlife scientist Dr Vanessa Perotta. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for giving us your time once again. So tell us about this. I mean, we still haven't got the genetic testing results yet, but why are experts so sure that this is not Migaloo? I can't believe how quickly this has moved and mm. this is always the way with these types of things, but this is coming from the horse's mouth, so this is very good. We have a statement put out from the Department of Environment, Land, Water and, Wa Land, Water and Planning, mm. and uh, I will acknowledge Peter Brick, who's the regional agency commander, and I refer to my notes because this has just really happened very quickly, mm. but they their assessment, and I'm hoping they had additional images to what has been provided to the public, which I hopefully would hope the locals would provide, has confirmed what we suspected, but without official clear images, we are very cautious to make an assumption, uh, that this is in fact a female whale. Uh -huh. Now, Migaloo is a male whale and we know that 100% through genetic testing. Mm -hmm. So this is in fact another mystery mm. so this this does not shut the door uh to this is done okay we forget about it what is going to go on now is that they are now going to try and assess whether this is a white whale or not oh. so could this add to oh. the next level of potentially another white whale out there which we suspect but as i said earlier with our cross there are evidence of some patches that would appear to be darkened skin. The barnacles attached to the external layer of skin, which mm. I'm suggesting around, and you can see the pectoral flipper there above the arm, but also the throat. So all of these things have come together, but the fact that we have had authorities in the area come out with this statement, it's mm. really important. So we're, we're gonna go with that, which is great. So the mystery continues though, because now the question is, well, where is Migaloo? Yeah. Mm. Who is this? What has happened to this whale? Yeah. And a necropsy will be undertaken. And, and also authorities are urging people to remain at least 300 metres away mm. from this individual as they do present a potential health hazard for us as humans, but also there is that danger for sharks to be attracted in the area, which mm. are all, as I point out, as a also a marine scientist, part of the natural ecosystem we need sharks yeah. in the environment to break down animals like this but for human safety it would be most likely authorities will probably remove the animal mm. from that area off site mm. mm. so what is the process then for authorities removing it off site so that those scientific benefits can be achieved because there are benefits for the research Yes, that's right. There's positive to a negative situation. So don't be so down, everyone. There is some positive here. We can, or at least the authorities, can at the scene take measurements. We suspected this was probably a lot smaller than Migaloo. So um, obviously we're unable to provide all that information to the public. So that will probably be consistent with looking around a 10 metre or so whale. I can't judge by a photo like this. But the samples will be taken, measurements, morphometrics of how long the arms are, the flukes. Mm. And then the initial assessments, and there might be a necropsy done at the area. And then the next juicy stage would be the logistics of moving an animal, potentially up to 20,000 kilos or so mm. of blubber. Yeah. And you, you're going to need to call on, a, on an excavator, someone with a local tractor. Obviously, people have done this before in the area. So it's not just a case of getting your shovel and taking parts of a whale, moving it offshore. It's a logistical challenge with any animal this size. Yeah. Mm. Uh, now, Vanessa, earlier on, you said that this could possibly not be a white whale we know white whales are very rare you had mentioned that there is some discoloration that's what the images seem to suggest how rare are albino whales i mean do, do we know how many there are in the wild we don't know how many there are in the wild so that's a really good question and so that's why i think migaloo is so famous because well he's his genetics has been done on him and he is a known individual but it's it's not every day you hear or you see of a white whale. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's 40,000 individuals in this population. To see an animal that is white is always uh, a thing that grabs people's attention. But in this case, could it just be a severe case of weathering, as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, and I've 
me and the team with the White Whale Research Centre have continued to stress that we didn't know at that stage, but also it could be an animal that's been weathered over time yeah. and the sun and the yeah. skin mm. coming off, the waves, the salt yeah. water. You know what it's like yeah. with being yeah. on a boat. It, yeah. mm. Things degrade over time. <laughs> and Vanessa, we're, we're quickly running out of time, but that means that Migaloo is still out there. He hasn't been seen for two years, but he's still, um, he's still out there swimming. He's still out there. So what's happened to him? The mystery continues. Mm. So watch this space. We are watching <laughs> Dr. Vanessa Perotta. It's great to have you on Weekend Breakfast. Thank you so much for this is the third time we've spoken to you this weekend. So thanks for being our whale correspondent for the weekend. <laughs> Thank you.